Hello, I'm Mantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be discussing the upcoming Player's Choice Godfest. Basically discussing how it works, why it's important, and how you can make the most out of your vote. So, first things first, Player's Choice Godfest. How does it work? So, during a Player's Choice Godfest, which happens twice per year, Gung-Ho allows players to vote for their favorite gods to be included in a special godfest. So, of all the 134-odd ones available, only the top 25 are selected, and those 25 are put into a special godfest. Furthermore, any godfest exclusives that do not get voted in will not actually appear in the godfest whatsoever, so all those light metatrons out there will not find their way into the Player's Choice godfest. So, who should you vote for? Because this is going to be a major point of controversy because there will be people out there saying vote for this because I want it and you'll be like I don't know what I want what sh and I want to try and help you cut through the chatter and help you decide on your own what you should be voting for. So first things first, you should vote for who you want because after all this is your vote. You want it to try and help benefit you the most. For instance, just because Krishna is a very powerful leader for many players, if you have no fire monsters whatsoever, Krishna has no value to you. So there's no point in hopping onto that Krishna bandwagon because it has no spot on your team nor monster box. So again, vote for what is going to benefit you the most because, like again, uh, don't let the masses try and sway you otherwise because, say, you need a Sarasvati but everyone's like Krishna, you should vote for Sarasvati if that will help you the most. Another point to consider is what is being released in the next month or two, because we play in the North American or European server, and we actually have about one to two month delay from Japan, so we can see the new content that is being released, and we can kind of plan our teams out accordingly. We can have the evolution materials ready, the experience, the plus eggs, and as soon as it goes live, we can evolve, invest, skill up, and go nuts. So with Player's Choice Godfest, you should kind of keep those points in mind, because Let's say you have a straw raw dragon team in the making. You should try and vote for his ideal subs in order to acquire them. Because let's say you have a raw dragon, dark Kali, and Isis. You need a Kana. So voting for Kana makes sense in this case. Even though raw dragon is not here, and you, if you rolled Kana today, it won't benefit you right now. In one to two months, that Kana is going to have immense value on that future raw dragon team. In addition, you should vote for what is relevant now. Because Puzzle and Dragons does have a certain degree of power creep, voting for monsters that have less staying power currently is unwise, because you may roll them and be happy, but in one to two months they become outdated. So it's generally better to try and vote for newer things that are coming out. So for instance, the new reincarnated gods that are coming out have a lot more staying power because they will have their value and viability for a longer time. Conversely, something like, say, a arc like Awoken Lucifer, who is a good leader, he is losing his ground because there are better and better tank teams being released, and he's just going to fall off to a certain extent after a couple more months, relatively speaking, in terms of at least trying to clear endgame content. And finally, six-star Godfest exclusives have very bad rates. This is something to keep in mind. Just because 25 cards make it in, it's not a perfect 4% split. It's actually a very uneven split, and with the Godfest exclusives being very rare. So, what you need to consider is, do you want to roll in Player's Choice Godfest or a 5 times Godfest exclusive? So this is data that was taken from the previous December's Player's Choice Godfest. It's only a small sample size of about a thousand odd rolls. And as you can see here, the 6-star Godfest exclusives like Red Odin, Kayere, Kana, Dark Metatron, who got a lot actually, Dark Kali, Ryune, all received very depressingly low number of rolls compared to the five-star Godfest exclusives and just the regular Pantheons. So you have to keep this in mind. Just because you love a six-star, it's not going to have very good odds coming out of this machine because of those thousand rolls, only two got Kayede. So obviously this is a small sample size. If you have a link to a much larger sample size, please feel free to share it and I'll put it in the post accordingly. But it's just to give you at least some ballpark figure of how six-star Godfest exclusives work in Player's Choice Godfest. It's not very promising. So basically, it's just a quick little chart summary of what Godfest you should roll in. If you want to roll in a Player's Choice Godfest, it only happens about twice a year, and it's generally best for people who have, say, newer accounts, and those who are willing to wanting to fill in lots of monsters. Because let's say you're missing numerous 
um, Pantheon cards, usually the most popular ones are voted in, so you have a great chance to acquire all the Pantheon cards that you want without the necessary filler alongside. Because there are some Pantheons with stronger cards than others, and if you're able to um, remove the filler, this is good for you. So generally speaking, newer accounts or players that want to fill in lots of cards, like Player's Choice Godfest, and those who are not chasing monster points or the six-star Godfest exclusives. Conversely, the five times Godfest exclusives generally are better for, say, more veteran players who have more developed monster boxes. Their focus is more on the monster points and the six-star Godfest exclusives. And like that's the main reason why you should be rolling for five times Godfest exclusives instead of player's choice. However, if the player's choice lineup is so good and a lot of the five stars or the regular pantheons are desirable, it may be worth rolling there anyways. So, in conclusion, player's choice Godfest is an exciting time because we get to basically have our voices heard. We can see what the more popular leaders and subs or monsters are in Puzzle and Dragons, and we can see basically what the player base wants, and that helps maybe give Gung Ho some indication of what Godfest they should feature in the future. But regardless, it's a great opportunity for you to acquire numerous valuable cards because if the voting is done intelligently, every card should at least have reasonable amounts of value on a wide variety of teams. So let me know what you think about Player's Choice Godfest as a whole, and who are you voting for? Have a fantastic day, and happy puzzling!